Good morning. I want to welcome you to our worship service this morning. It's good for us to be gathered here the first Sunday after Easter as we continue to celebrate and uh, re remember and rejoice in all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Um, as we enter into a time of worship and just have a, a couple announcements. One is that our um, the coffee and conversation as well as the Bible study this week um, we will not have it this week because uh, I will be on study leave. And so uh, I'll be at the West Coast uh, Presbyterian Pastors Conference up at Mount Hermon, which is uh, just outside of Santa Cruz. And um, I look forward to sharing with you and, and seeing you all the following week when, when I'm back in town. Uh, also, next Sunday, uh, Ernie Tamika will be leading us in worship uh, as we uh, celebrate uh, a special creation Sunday. So uh, excited for, for Ernie to be um, leading that worship service. Uh, but as we uh, prepare our hearts to join together at the Lord's table, let us lift up our hearts, our minds, our, our very beings as we worship God together. And so I invite you to rise in body or spirit, and I want to invite Isla and, and Amy to come forward and lead us in our call to worship. Good morning. Good morning. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall have told your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. They will recount the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works I will meditate. They will proclaim the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your they shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Let us remain standing as we join in singing Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Be 
scripture proclaims, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins before God, first silently, and then together with the words printed in the bulletin. Eternal God, we are lost, broken people who spend our lives chasing things that don't matter. We go our own way, we have our own agenda, and we play by the rules we have created. We are very dependent and full of pride. Forgive us for living what we don't need to. <coughs> hear the assurance of grace. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sure. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. Peace be with you. You want to tell Bertie and, and you want to tell Bertie and Marilyn in the camera? Peace be with you. Okay. Back up, Bertie. Bertie. Peace be with you and Marilyn. And Marilyn. Yeah. Oh, no, Marilyn, that's her. Oh, Marilyn, dear friend, peace be with you. I don't, I don't know if this mic is on. Hello. <laughs> Just trying to get more people. Well, peace. Thank you. Thank you. Please be with you, Katie. Nice to see you. Thank you. Also with you. Peace of Christ. So it didn't connect? No, it did. It did. I'm is not, it no, it's, Yeah, okay. I'm doing both, but I can't get into my email to get I don't know. It's <laughs> always automatic. As we sing our, our hymn of uh, preparation, Lord, whose love through humble service, uh, just a note um, that the melody we're singing is actually from hymn 422, not 427. So just to 
the words are hymn 427. So let us rise in body or spirit and join together. <laughs> seated. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all, us all, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. 
We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I'll admit that uh, this particular passage isn't, isn't a, a lectionary text, at least not the lectionary reading for this first Sunday after Easter, but I, I just had one of those moments that every once in a while happens. It doesn't happen often enough to where, where I might question it, but it's, it, it was sometime on, on Easter Sunday afternoon as, as I nodded in and out of um, <laughs> sleep on the couch, uh, as I kind of decompressed from uh, all, everything from Holy Week to our Easter Sunday celebrations, that this particular text came to mind. And it doesn't always happen, but it, but it happens um, just enough to know that the Holy Spirit is, is, is poking or prodding and saying, here you go. <laughs> so here we are. And I think part of it is simply just this reflection after celebrating the joy of Easter, this, this reflection that, that comes where I start thinking about the implications of, of what we have been celebrating. The resurrection of Jesus proclaiming new life, proclaiming this reconciliation uh, that, that God has done in Jesus Christ, this, this opportunity for humanity to reconnect and, and be grounded in their creator in the way that they were unable to do on their own. And then this, this passage came to mind. This passage that I think really encapsulates and, and grabs the passion that Paul has for this reality. Paul being someone who experienced the transformational power of Jesus Christ in, in such profound ways that that it cannot be ignored. That he is someone who was so passionate and so vehemently against Christians. Someone who was so sure of what it meant to be righteous before God and to be, uh, you know, to be perfect or at least pursuing this perfection as a Pharisee. Only to give up all of it for the sake of Jesus Christ. And it is from that, that standpoint, from that foundation of giving up everything, from really walking away from everything in terms of his identity, in terms of his community of faith, in order to follow Jesus, that, that we find this passion today. Because he is someone, just as the, the people listening to his words uh, are experiencing this, this deep and, and real experience of, of, of people pursuing them or people trying to get them to stop talking about what had happened and what was continuing to happen because of Jesus Christ. This life-changing, earth-shattering experience that they had undergone. And naturally, people had some questions about that. They had wondered, okay, well, we hear about this good news of Jesus. We hear that in Jesus Christ we can, we can experience salvation and as as I, I like to, to mention, this word salvation in the New Testament, in the Greek, is a holistic word. So 
uh, in the 21st century and, and even in the 20th century, we, we use that word or Christian communities so often use that word as a, a word describing where you are going to go when you die. So to say, are you saved or is somebody saved? Um, they're so often simply talking about that, about are you going to go to heaven or not? Now, the New Testament isn't necessarily saying, not talking about that, but they're talking a, 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 about way more than just that. They're talking about a reality that, that, that is experienced and undergone in the very present moment of people's lives, not just some future thing. It's something that begins with faith in Christ and unfolds in our lives. I think it's a much healthier way to, to think about salvation. Salvation is, is, is wholeness. You are being made whole and new in Jesus Christ. But with that comes questions. Because if we are made, being made whole and new, then why, why are we experiencing the challenges that humanity faces? We're all getting older. We, um, I, <laughs> this week, I, I did a, a little bit of work on my car. I've, um, uh, for years, had spent hours working on, on cars and really enjoying that. Uh, but I haven't done much on my car recently in, in a long time. But I was, I was uh, doing some installing of, of a trailer hitch on my car. And, and the next day, I, I woke up and... And, and I was sore in really odd places. Well, not odd places, but places I hadn't been sore for in a long time. My abs hurt. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> My neck was sore. Uh, and, and then, you know, it finally dawned on me that, that I hadn't used those muscles in a while. And lying on the ground under the car holding this heavy piece of metal was, was, was something my body wasn't used to. <laughs> And as I get older and experience those experiences of, of things hurting that never hurt before, or at least didn't hurt from doing the things I'm doing now, I say, that's not supposed to happen. And sometimes we, we feel that way about our faith in Jesus. We say, well, I trust in Jesus, so this isn't supposed to happen. I'm not supposed to feel sad or, or feel lonely or, or feel uh, a sense of, of hopelessness or, or um, anxiety. There's a million things that, that we feel and, and if we aren't careful with how we talk about Jesus' work in our lives, we might think that somehow new life in Christ means that we get to escape just the realities of, of human existence. And even this, this particular chapter in Romans, we find that Christians over, over the centuries, and in recent centuries in particular, have liked to use Roman chap Romans chapter 8 to explain away hardships in a way that says, oh, we can just ignore that. Um, earlier in the chapter, Paul says, all, all things work for the good of of God's children, uh, more or less is what, what he's saying. But, but people will say this, and I've, I've heard it very, in very troubling ways, said to people who are experiencing deep loss or uh, really challenging moments in life, and people have said, oh, well, God's doing it for some reason. <laughs> There's some purpose for this. As if God wants you to suffer. And that's not at all what Paul is, is talking about here. And I think it really comes to this crescendo in our text this morning. It's not that God is, is reframing and, and giving us challenges so that we can rise to them and somehow be better people. But God is at work in us in the midst of the challenges of human life. 
Paul says, no, 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 no. It isn't that we won't undergo um, really challenging moments. It isn't that somehow we've escaped the human condition because of Jesus Christ. It's that none of these things are capable of separating us from God. None of these things are capable from separating us from the love that we experience in Jesus Christ. It says in all these things we are more than conquerors because of what Jesus has done. There's nothing in scripture that says God wants us to suffer or that God is causing us to suffer for some special reason that we can't fathom. It's that God is with us in the midst of whatever we are experiencing with our highs and with our lows. And there's way more <laughs> consolation and, and freedom and hope to be found in that. As we look out in the world, we, we, aren't, we don't see, you know, just prosperity and, and joy and, and wonderful things. We see a whole tapestry of human experience. We see the good and the bad and everything else in between. Paul doesn't lead us to a place where we somehow tune out or ignore the realities of life. Paul leads us to a place where we embrace God's presence in the midst of life. He says nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. It is a much more honest place and for me, a much more comforting place to be. Then in the midst of whatever may unfold, God is present with us. As a pastor who, um, you know, is, is always tempted, as, as pastors are, as, as church leaders are, to have everything um, in place and unfold just the way it's supposed to be, even this morning provided opportunity to be reminded that that is not the central point of why we are gathered here in worship. So in a little while, as we celebrate communion, we're going to celebrate communion by intinction, which we haven't done in, in quite some time. We haven't done it since before COVID. Um, and we didn't do it because we thought we're finally ready to do it. We did it because the communion cups disappeared. And... <laughs> And so this is the only way we can celebrate it. Uh, meanwhile, while that's unfolding, um, the last several weeks we've had trouble with our live stream. Uh, because the, the company that we use for the equipment that we live stream with was bought by, I think, the Dish Network or one of those. And, and uh, for whatever reason, that, uh, that device works Monday through Saturday. <laughs> but not Sundays. Um, and uh, if, if you search online, you'll find that other churches are experiencing that very same thing. It's only on Sunday, it doesn't work. If we try it again tomorrow, it will work. Uh, thankfully this morning, I found a way to kind of work around it, but I found that at what, 9.15. So while the communion cups went missing, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to do something I'm normally not doing. And all of this is unfolding while I really should just be prayerfully preparing myself for worship. And I'm thinking, well, this isn't the point of all this. But if I'm not in the right frame of mind, then, then it feels like the, the, the train can just come off the rails and <laughs> we end up out in the wilderness somewhere. But we're not here because we, we need everything to unfold just as it's supposed to unfold. 
We are here to give praise and to lift up our hearts because in Jesus Christ, we do indeed experience and receive and grow into this new life. That it isn't all this other stuff that we kind of layer upon top, uh, on top of it and say, these are the important things. Now, many of those things I've learned to let go of over the years or just simply not find to be the most important, whether that's preaching exactly a certain number of minutes or having a worship service that goes exactly to uh, 59 minutes and 59 seconds, as if somehow that's what God has ordained, um, or the millions of, of other things that, that can unfold in our lives. Because when we allow those things to take hold, uh, they tend to have this domino effect. I, I know I've, I've had that recently where one thing goes wrong, and it wasn't today, but one thing goes wrong. And then while you're flustered by that and moving to the next thing, that kind of goes wrong, and then you trip and bump into things, and then next thing you know, um, your, your kid's poking you for something else, and you're irritable. And um, <laughs> Instead of just letting go, and taking it as it comes. Paul provides for us this amazing picture of what it looks like to let go of everything for the sake of faith in Jesus Christ. It's liberating, it's freeing, Sometimes it asks us to let go of concerns that we are determined to hold on to or, or ideas or, or a million other things. But if we simply let go, not only can we experience the joyous and wonderful love of God in new and amazing ways, but we can live that out with one another. We are able to love those around us with abandon, without any concern, because God loves us in that same way. As we prepare to celebrate at the Lord's table this morning, we celebrate this meal that proclaims and connects to us in, in spiritual ways to this communion, this connection that we have to our creator in our Lord Jesus Christ. This meal is proclaiming what, what Paul is, is offering and proclaiming to his listeners. That in Jesus Christ, we are not just connected to, but engrafted. That we are, we are just woven together with our creator. And so as we share of this meal, as we break bread together, I invite you to renew that reality. Invite God to show this to you once again what it means to be a, a very, in the very heart of God, to be connected and joined with our Savior. Amen. Let us remain seated as we sing our hymn of response, number 507, I Come With Joy. <laughs>
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the kingdom of God. For they will come from east and west, from north and south, to sit at table in God's kingdom. This table is not a Presbyterian table, but the Lord's table. And so all are invited to share in this feast. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your son, Jesus. We thank you that in him we receive new life. And in him we find wholeness. And in him we find salvation. And so as we join at this table, I pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and cup. That the bread we break and the cup we bless would be the communion of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. That in this meal you would renew us, refresh us, you would fill us and equip us for the work you have called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So it was on the night of his arrest that our Lord Jesus was with his disciples. And having taken bread and blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, to shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. So uh, as, as we have been doing more recently, I invite you to come forward as you feel so led. Uh, if you would come down the middle aisles and then return uh, by way of the sides, uh, that would be most helpful. Uh, also, if, if you are unable to come down, we will have servers that will come to you as well. And so let us come and receive the bounty that our Lord has prepared for us. Come and eat.
Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for these abundant gifts. We thank you for your presence in our lives and the ways in which you continue to be at work in us, continuing to transform us into uh, the image of your very son, Jesus. So I pray that you would continue your work, that you continue um, to, to guide us and lead us each and every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. As we give thanks for all that we have received, I invite our ushers to come forward as we present our tithes, gifts, and offerings. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the ways in which you will use everything that we present to you, everything that we yield to you from our lives. And so I pray that you would bless these our tithes, gifts, and offerings in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. These are the prayers of the people, O oh God. We come before you and lift up those things that weigh upon our hearts, for we know that you are faithful. We know that you hear us, that you love us, and that you respond to us. And so, Lord, we lift up our world to you. We lift up... Uh, so many who are suffering because of conflict and war. We pray for your peace to be made known this day. Help us to reconcile with one another that what has divided us will no longer prevail. But your peace and your love and your goodness will be made known to all the world. Oh Lord, we pray for those who hunger and thirst this day. We pray for those who are suffering because of famine, who are suffering in poverty, for those who find no place 
to rest their heads or find shelter from storms. Oh Lord, we pray for your provision and your care. Open our hearts and the hearts of all your children to the suffering of those around them. That we might be your hands and feet, that we might bear witness to your goodness as we care for others. Oh Lord, we lift up those in our midst who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. We pray for your healing hand to be upon them. We pray for those who uh, work in medical professions and those who are caregivers. We pray that you would give them the strength and the wisdom to continue this amazing work. And so, Lord, we, we lift up those whose hearts are weary, those who are mourning this day. We pray for your peace, which goes beyond all understanding, to rest upon them as they, as they experience this time of loss. Oh Lord, we thank you for those who have come before us, who are now in your presence. We thank you for the ways in which they have taught us and we rejoice that they are now in your very kingdom. O oh Lord, may we follow in their footsteps. May we continue to grow and to learn for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray and with whose words we continue to pray, praying our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of forever. Amen. Let us rise in body or spirit and sing together how great thou art.
So as we go out this day, let us go out proclaiming God's greatness. For in Jesus Christ, nothing can separate us from our Father's love. And so go with God's blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.